Can't believe I actually danced to the insiders theme every Friday morning. It's just the weirdest thing. Hello, YouTube. Yes, we've swapped out one tech giant for another. What could possibly go wrong? You won't get mad at us too, will you? YouTube, we're streaming live on the ABC News YouTube site this morning with David Spears, who's the presenter of Insiders. Good morning. Very good morning. And ABC Radio Melbourne, of course. We stream on that on our web page That's as well. That's just a given, isn't it? <laughs> Look, hey, I'm just trying to keep up with this stuff. There's a lot to talk about. You and I were distracted, though, because we're watching Kevin Rudd making yes. his opening statement there to the media. No, is it media diversity media inquiry? Media diversity inquiry. Right. This is the um, unloading on News Corp uh, moment, Sorry. I think, from Kevin Rudd, which he's been building up to for a while. So, he's yes. been rehearsing it. Yes. What do we think of the beard? Uh, you were asking me this off air, uh, I Virginia. I have, I have mixed views on the beard, but I'm not one to criticise because um, show. My, mine's, my, show. my summer uh, beard You better is, log on to YouTube is, and ABC Radio Melbourne face, uh, our page right now because we're going to show you something. Look, it's not dissimilar to Kevin's in the greyness anyway. Look, there it is. That's, that's as big as I've, I've got on my phone here. That is extraordinary. Hey, Darcy, can you get a good shot on that? Sorry about the big pint of beer in the... In so, the it's a holiday snap. Is that right? So is that working? Can you see that? I really hope you can. Oh, my God. <laughs> you think I should have kept it on, Virginia, or...? Uh... You look like the freakiest mad scientist I've ever seen. I look about 20 years older. <laughs> <laughs> you really... That, the only thing that, that ages you. I shaved, I shaved it off and, uh, uh, you know, to come back to work. And, Good um, on you. My, my daughter said, Dad, you look so much younger. <laughs> Win. <laughs> Win, which he does anyway. And that's the end of the levity because anyway. the rest of our discussion this morning is going to be pretty damn serious. Uh, let's start off, yep. of course, with the, the Brittany Higgins story. I mean, her allegations have just been horrifying. They would be in any other workplace. And the apparent response and the evident response, the institutional, I'll, I'll use the word cover up, uh, that seems to have gone on in Parliament House, that would be uh, upsetting anywhere. But the fact that it is federal parliament, it does make it worse, David. Oh, it does make it worse. I mean, sure, you can uh, you know, reach for explanations as to you know, how parliament is fundamentally um, driven by politics and that's going to override things inevitably. It doesn't excuse at all uh, what's happened. That's not how it should work. In, you know, in fact, there should be some political uh, advantage from being open and transparent and dealing with these, we should reward that uh, politically. So look, I think there are you know, the, the biggest problems are obviously what happened in 2019 and how this was handled. But there have also been ha problems in how it's uh, been dealt with this week by the government. Some mm. of the language of the Prime Minister not grasping the gravity of this until his wife Jenny uh, you know, clarified for him, um, not opting for the, the more far-reaching independent inquiry. Initially, it took a, a Labor suggestion to get there, and let's hope that does lead to some positive change. But yes, there have been a, a series of errors in how all of this has been handled. As I say, the biggest ones, though, back in 2019 in the office of Linda Reynolds. I went back yesterday and, and re-watched the interview that uh, aired on the project mm. and reread read Samantha Maiden's stories, just to re-familiarise myself with the, the procession of events. And when you read them again, the, um, this is again my term, but just the, the cold bloodedness of it is the thing that gets you that nowhere in that story is there any rush to, oh my God, how are you? Just that simple human response. Well, Linda Reynolds yesterday was emotional in the Senate and sounded quite empathetic and offered a broader apology than she had earlier in the week. That's that's great. But at the time, look, we still haven't heard from Linda Reynolds. She hasn't done an interview, uh, a press conference or anything mm. like that to go through the ins and outs of what she knew and what she did at the time. But from what we know, it took five days from finding out about the allegation of a rape in her office to actually talk to Brittany Higgins about it. And when she did, it was in the room where the alleged rape took place. That's the first problem. Then there are issues around what, how they responded to this. Now, yes, uh, there was encouragement to talk to police. There was a brochure given to her offering some counselling. I mean, please. Mm. Um, but then she was sent to WA 
for the duration of the campaign, not long after, where she had no family or friends to support her. I mean, along the chain here, you can just see error after error about someone in this situation, how they should have been supported in the workplace. What you see is a replication of the fearful and cowardly institutional response that we've seen in institutions and businesses around the country mm. for years, which is that the first, if you look at it coldly and put all the pieces together, the first response seems to be, oh, hell, we better make this go away, or we better keep this on the down low, or, or, or we better sort of somehow smooth it over. The first response is never, oh my goodness, someone claims they've been hurt and assaulted in a criminal way. This needs to have all the light in the world cast on it. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I take that point. I do think though in some workplaces, and you heard this from the Prime Minister and others this week, there's, there is also, um, the the approach of giving agency to the victim and saying, what do you want to do here? Do you want to go to police or not? Now, this can be, um, you know, I assume I've never been in this situation, a somewhat vexed uh, decision. How much do you let the victim decide whether to go to police or should it be mandatory to go to police and pursue an inquiry? Um, you know, I, I get that that's a, a bit more complicated in workplaces than perhaps it sounds. Oh, look, only slightly. I mean, mm. evidence has shown, and you know, and I've written on this extensively in, in the book that I published about it, that it's actually a bit of a furphy. Mm. I mean, there still has been, if you have knowledge of uh, of an alleged crime having been committed, there's an onus on yeah. you. And I, I, if your yeah. security guards have footage of an alleged crime, there's an onus on you. It's a crime. Exactly. Yeah. That, that person may or may not go on to make a complaint, and you're quite right, they have that right. But yeah. there's still something that's going on in your workplace that has to be dealt with. Yeah, and I look I absolutely am inclined to that view as well. Um, I, I'm just saying that I think that's that's the approach, and certainly the defence that we've heard here that they were giving yeah, but, her agency. But it's a number of defences now, isn't it? Yeah. So it's this one and that one and that one, and also the, with the uh, the text messages that have come out this morning, and so far no one's disputed them. It actually means that that first meeting you made mention of in relation to then her then minister Linda Reynolds that took place several days after that exchange. So. Let's just talk about this text message, right? Because th here we get to what the Prime Minister's office knew and when. And this, I think, is going to become the bigger political uh, question That's for right. Scott Morrison now, because he said in Parliament this week, he told the House that his office only found out on Friday of last week, right? A week ago today, and that he only found out on Monday when it was reported. Now, there have been a number of... Um, uh, challenges to that assertion. The most recent is this report today and revelation of, of a text message from another former government advisor um, to Brittany Higgins saying, I have told the PMO about this, they're mortified and so on. I've spoken to that former government advisor um, now and, and, and he has confirmed to me that yes, he did tell a member of the Prime Minister's office in April of 2019. So we're talking in the immediate weeks after the alleged rape. He did tell a member of the Prime Minister's office about the alleged rape. Um, his main concern and Brittany's main concern at the time was that she wasn't getting enough counselling support, that she was told that it'd be a two week wait uh, for a counsellor. And, you know, they clearly wanted to get things moving faster than that. The Prime Minister's office, though, I've spoken to them as well. They deny this. They don't deny there was a conversation, but they deny there was any mention of a rape allegation. So this is a contested um, suggestion here that this other member of the Prime Minister's office knew about it. There are there are then questions around Yaron Finkelstein, the Principal Private Secretary, whether he called Brittany Higgins last year around the time of the Four Corners story. Then there's also the other senior uh, advisor in the Prime Minister's office who was the Acting Chief of Staff in Linda Reynolds' office who did know about it at the time. So all of this is going to be investigated by Phil Gations, the head of the Prime Minister's department, if it is ultimately found that the Prime Minister misled the House, either inadvertently or otherwise, that's a problem, a big problem for him. Well, that's an extraordinary revelation this morning that the, in mm. that conversation, because that's not made clear in the reports this morning, in that conversation that that person had mm. to the member of the Prime Minister's office, he was explicit that it was about a rape. Yes. And that, and that former advisor, former government advisor, no longer working in government, has told me that, yes, he did tell uh, the Prime Minister's office about the alleged rape of that, Brittany Higgins. As you say, that's disputed. At the other end of that the office, they say, we the were not told that. Office. That's right. That's right. And then we see this text message, which is from this former government advisor to Brittany Higgins saying, I have told the PMO. Just looking at it, applying simple sense, just, you know, the, the, the old yep. you know, legal tort of, you know, the, the man in the street is the phrase. It, it just doesn't pass the credibility test that all of these people in this the most powerful office in the land would not at some point go, what's it about? 
But hang on, hang on a minute. What's the issue? Uh, she's what? Why? I mean, it, it's the office in which uh, gossip is the, the most highly valued currency, well, being able to pass and receive. You think too, Virginia, we're leading up to an election here in 2019. Um, you know, I guess two ways of approaching this. You would think they would want to know in that office all of the... Um, potential landmines that are there, and this is obviously a big one leading up Tell to the election. Prime Minister's uh, office so we yes. know where the problems are. Yeah. The other uh, way of looking at it is, would there be an active um, consideration that we don't want the boss to know about this in case there's a question about it? And, you know, I, I don't know exactly what went down. I know that the Prime Minister's office deny they knew um, at the, and deny this, this particular uh, phone call that we're talking about here. Mm. Um, but it is becoming harder to deny and defend, the more of these uh, particular you know, um, connections emerge. Such a terrible story. And can I just yet again bring the whole story back? And it's where you started too, David, with it's actually about what is alleged to have happened to this woman, uh, what she went through, what she says she went through and how she was treated and how she is now. And I think that's, I just want us to always to keep focusing yeah, on that. And I do think it's worth at the end of this week coming back to that point because yes we're, we're focused understandably on the political damage to the government sure. the questions for the prime minister but let's not forget Brittany higgins in all of this this has been a really uh, courageous thing that she's done but not without cost i think this this has been i know it has been a really really tough week for her and for her loved ones and now massive cost it seems according to what uh, peter van onselen said yesterday on radio national uh, to her current partner now where there's been briefings background briefings he says by the prime minister's office against him are you aware of those look i haven't received any briefings against yeah. him but i i know this is um uh, the, the view of others that yes that that has gone on I haven't received any such briefings but look I know uh, Brittany Higgins um, and her partner really don't feel supported this week David Spears is with you. He's the host of Insiders and we're streaming this conversation live on ABC Radio Melbourne website and on the ABC News YouTube channel as well because the other guys don't like us very much. Um, has, shall we talk about them? Shall we talk about them? Uh, okay, so read the politics of this for me. Did the government mishandle these, I'll say, negotiations with very big air quotes around them? So with, with, uh, with Facebook, it, yeah. it's, it's been such a funny week, right, because... Um, the, the previous day, so we're talking on the Wednesday, Google uh, suddenly coughed up the dough and did deals. Yeah, but how much dough? Well, we don't know. We're hearing, and this is... Tiny we, amounts we we're that? hearing. Well, no, 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 we're actually talking substantial amounts. Won't, re won't replace what the, the major media companies say is their lost advertising oh, revenue. okay. And well, that's what all this is, yeah. is supposed to be about. Replacing dollar for dollar. The, uh, look, $30 million a year will make a big difference to um, any newsroom. That's that's not chump change, if if that's indeed. But we don't know the dollar amount. <laughs> Depends amounts. what their losses are. But okay, let's yeah. go on. <laughs> well, I think look, just to unpack that, media has been in decline for decades. Journalism jobs have been disappearing. Uh, it, it's not all because of Google and Facebook. You know, media has to look at itself here a little bit. Absolutely. It's been absolutely exacerbated by Google and Facebook, and that's what this government action is trying to try to address. Um, I, I, the, the numbers that are reported, and we don't we don't know. There's you know, there's no transparency around how much Google and Facebook are meant to pay, will pay. Indeed, there's no transparency around what will happen to that money. We expect it will go in, be invested into journalism. The ABC has said it will go into regional journalism, but will nine, will news, will seven spend all that money on journalism we'll see we'll see um anyway just that that note that of skepticism <laughs> that you detect there from i David hope they Spears. do uh but uh look yeah so anyway it was on track google doing deals this week with nine news seven uh, and expected deals soon with the abc and the guardian uh facebook the government was pretty sure were on their way to announcing deals as well uh and then uh, yes absolutely blindsided all of a sudden um uh, all these sites are blocked. Uh, look, Facebook clearly overplayed their hand in, in blocking all these essential services as well. You know, there's a bipartisan view that this is reprehensible from Facebook and you've seen the, the public reaction to it as well. Does Facebook care about that? I'm not so sure. Uh, this, at the end of the day, they have a couple of fundamental concerns. The big one is not setting an international precedent here mm. in Australia that makes them pay. Uh, the core complaint they have about this particular bill is what's called the final offer arbitration, which means an independent umpire, if they can't do a deal um, with the ABC, for example, uh, an independent umpire would say, here's what you've got to pay. No company likes that 
uh, sort of arbitration model. And so, but it, but it is core to the bill. It's not something the government can now budge on. No, it's core to the bill. But also, what obligation does a company, an international tech giant like Facebook, even have to appear and turn up to said arbitration? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I, I don't, we'll send off the affidavits yeah. and they just won't reply. <laughs> Look, yes, uh, and you know, ultimately, if they are issued with a bill, here's what you got to pay. Uh-huh. How does how does that work? Uh, look, you know, if who's the bail bondsman that goes around to collect that? <laughs> if it's the law of the <laughs> land, um, I, yeah, I'd have to check what penalties might apply if they refuse. But anyway, I went, we're not at that point yet, but we're certainly at the point of a standoff where Facebook, uh, yes, they might have brought back online some of these essential services, but I don't know. Are they going to bring back the the, the media companies? Uh, I don't think the government's go, the, the government's willing to tweak the bill a bit but as I say the the fundamentals it can't really shift on now well it can't Josh Frydenberg's meant to be speaking to Mark Zuckerberg again this morning that's right we'll see where that goes but this is this is a fascinating uh, standoff Australia as we know the first to try and get in and regulate in this way uh, you know companies that are really in that blurred space aren't they between publisher and platform and we can get into the (laughs) arguments about what Facebook is and what it's revealed to be over the last 24 hours um, but it's it's not easy regulating someone in that blurred space. No other country has. Yeah. So let's see where this lands. And in the end, it is about supporting the revenue base where we started this conversation, uh, revenue base of the media companies. I think that's a very important political aspect of this to remember, yeah. is that this is a, a private tech company that uh, every media organisation and public and private has been very happy to piggyback off yep. and to use for some time and we had no problem with Facebook becoming the tech giant and the platform giant that it was and that suited the purpose of our media players for a long time yep. right up to the point where it didn't mm. right and where advertising revenue started to fall away and it has for quite a number of years anyway those so-called rivers of gold they've gone and then it didn't work for them so bearing in mind that the argument put by many that the federal government is doing the bidding of the media giants is something that you need to remember. Yeah, and I think it's also... And, and, in, and in particular, a very powerful news giant known as News Corp. Yeah, that's right, that's right. But it, it is, you know, it's not just News Corp. It's, it's not just the News ABC Corp. And it, look, I think it's fascinating too to consider public sentiment in this. Mainstream media often uh, is not a well-loved, trusted institution. MSM. MSM. Um, that's you. But is... <laughs> is Facebook, uh, I, I think, and and how does yesterday change that public sentiment? I mean, we can go through, uh, you know, Facebook's list of sins, whether it's the spreading of misinformation, the empowerment of Donald Trump for too long, mm. you know, all the, the sort of stuff that they've allowed to be streamed and uh, platformed there. Um, uh, not not to mention the way their secret algorithms work, the special source that put into your feed, the things that are in your feed, the lack of transparency around it. How much trust is there and support for Facebook in the community and how does that compare to the MSM? Uh, <laughs> and which is, you know, yes, us too. Lots and lots and lots of comments on this. How, how about addressing the fact that Facebook only blocked so many pages because that's what the legislation defied as, defined as news sites, mm. says Kevin Coleraine. Australia should be the mouse that brings down Facebook, i.e. the mouse that roared. Let's fight the bastards, says Morty Mick. And uh, why don't we ask Google to block Facebook? Uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll just make the point that, I mean, there's a, a slight compromise here for us as well. I mean, you know, my job is to sit here and independently report what's going on. And maybe my ABC masters won't like me saying this, but ABC management, of course, has a different agenda, which is, hey, don't block us. But to fairly report both sides, you know, there is a there is a private company interest here that they are perfectly entitled to uphold. This, yeah, and, and this is... You know, you, the, which is to, to not be charged for stuff that, you know, that they didn't actually create. Yeah, and, and, uh, it is hard to be completely um, uh, impartial about this when, uh, you know, certainly the two of us have lived in and worked uh, and relied on the media industry for our careers, right? Mm-hmm. And we've seen journalism jobs disappear for far too long. And we inherently want to see those journalism jobs protected sure. across the board. But I do think there's a there's a powerful argument when it comes to Facebook that, hang on, it's not asking these media companies, Google's a bit different, but Facebook, it's not asking these media companies to be on Facebook. That's right. They're choosing to be there. That's right. And then asking to be paid by Facebook. I, I can see their argument perfectly you know soundly I mean? and validly, I've got to say. So I've been, I've been saying that for a couple of weeks and people don't like to hear mm. it, but I can see their point. But on the flip side, it mm. has created this space sure. that is all powerful now. Who's it's he, a monopoly. Who's your guest on Sunday? We're talking vaccines with Greg Hunt. Uh, oh, excellent. They're coming Monday.
Great. Line up for your jabs. Yep. I can't wait to get mine. Insiders, of course, Sunday morning at 9am. Great to see you, David. Thanks, Virginia. And uh, great to have you streaming us live on the ABC News YouTube channel. Got to get used to saying that. And, of course, also on ABC Radio Melbourne website. And we'll keep streaming more and more on our own website, which you could argue we probably should have been doing in the first place, <laughs> thereby bypassing the tech giants. You're with Virginia on ABC Radio Melbourne. This morning, uh, press conference here in Victoria is not going to involve the Premier. It'll be the Minister for Health, Martin Foley, Jerome Weimar. We won't be bringing that to you live here on the radio.